here at League Apps. Um, in my role, I work closely with all of our top baseball partners. I'm a former baseball guy myself, having played in college and being drafted and playing in the Phillies minor league system um, before going on to work in their front office, the Astros front office, and the MLB commissioner's office prior to joining League Apps. Um, I was very fortunate to get introduced to Ed Easley through some mutual friends in the, the baseball community. I'm really pumped uh, to be here with Ed, uh, founder and owner of Easley Baseball Club, to talk about his club's uh, founding, growth, and why he chose to utilize league apps from the beginning, uh, and a little bit about what the future may hold for EBC. Uh, to kick things off, Ed, do you mind doing a, a quick introduction of yourself, your, your, your background in baseball, and kind of the, the vision of Easley Baseball Club? Sure. Um, thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me. Um, Played high school baseball here in North Mississippi. Signed and, and went on to Mississippi State. Played at Mississippi State University for three years. Drafted in 2007 out of Mississippi State. First round by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Played seven years with the Diamondbacks, three years with the Cardinals, and one year with the Pirates. Once I finished my playing career in 2017, decided to start my own baseball organization. Throughout my years of playing, every every off season, I would host tryouts, I'm sorry, uh, lessons and camps and clinics. So I kind of built my client base up during those during that time. And so once I was done playing, I had the opportunity to kind of put a suit on and, and go out in the real world and do some different things. But I decided I want to stay stay in baseball. So I got together with some buddies and, and created a brand and blasted the advertisement and had some tryouts. And here we are heading into our fourth season, 45 baseball teams, 10 softball teams. And we're excited about the future. Now that's awesome to hear. I know one of the most rewarding parts of my role here is getting to work with guys like you and helping you accomplish, um, you know, your, your business goals and, and achieving the things that you want to do with your business. Um, I was very fortunate to get introduced to you just as EBC was, was starting off just at the end of your uh, playing career. And I remember uh, vividly the conversations that you had of kind of where EBC was going to go in the first year, the second year in terms of um, numbers of, of players you wanted to help out and numbers of teams that you wanted to grow to. Um, when considering, when you were considering partners partnering with league apps at the very beginning, what were you looking for and how exactly did, league apps fit in with the, the vision that you had for EBC in the, the short term and the long term? So I think what I was looking for is the two main things that I, I utilized league apps for the most, um, at least right out the gate. So payment collection uh, and communication is, is the things that I kind of were, were hopeful that league apps would help with the most. And of course they have been a big part of, of how we've gotten to where we are today. Uh, and, and we'll hit on it, uh, I'm sure, on down the road. But but it, it just allows me to utilize uh, and focus on what I need to do on the field and, and prioritize my coaching staff and help everything continue to stay on track so so this um, behind-the-scenes stuff can, can stay all in order. Oh, that's great. And, and don't be shy. I know that you've had – Tremendous success uh, early on. I know, uh, you know, I appreciate that you're talking about us taking a lot of the busy work off your plate so that you can focus on the, the things that really matter to, to growing the, the organization, like your quality coaches and field space and things like that. Um, can you kind of give us the, the walkthrough of kind of the growth that you guys have had? I know you were saying 45 and, and 10 and 55 teams total. Uh, what has that kind of progression looked like in the, the first couple of years of, of Easley Baseball Club? Yeah, I remember us talking from the get-go of kind of a, a vision or a, a, a goal. And, you know, I don't really remember exactly what I told you, but I do know that, that we started with 12 teams, I think, the first fall. And then heading into that first summer, I think we ended up with around 20 teams. And that, that kind of completed year one. Year two, we went to about 27 teams. Year three, we went to around 32 or 35 teams, and this is all baseball. Year three, we actually uh, advertised and started up with softball as well. I think softball had about eight or 10 teams last year. Baseball is currently heading into its fourth season. 
it's a little unique how I do my fall. Um, we don't roster our teams from ages 14 to 18 until the, the winter gets here. But if I, with, with the numbers that we currently have, we're at approximately a 45 count for a baseball team and then 10, 10 or 11 softball teams. And so the growth has continued. And, and again, people often ask, uh, what, what is our, our end goal? What are we trying to get to? And I don't ever have a specific answer other than just, just continuing to do things right, provide a good service for these families and these boys and girls, and it'll just take care of itself. No, oh, that's awesome to hear. And being able to align ourselves with a founder that has the mission that you do um, is so rewarding on our end. And then to, to help you grow and scale this business and, um, you know, bring that youth sports experience to so many other kids uh, really aligns with our mission and our passion to make sports happen here. So um, you credit a lot of the success that you've had to the quality coaches that you've had along the way um, and, and really prioritizing that in terms of growth over, like you were saying, having like a set goal for the number of kids, you've really focused on the, the quality of coaching and the quality of the experience that you're bringing to these kids. Um, I'm sure others would love to know, how do you attract these quality coaches? I get asked that a lot. Um, and, and again, I, I should think a little bit more about a, a good answer for you and for everybody else, but I think it's just word of mouth. I think it's just the experiences that my coaches are having. Um, and then they go talk to their friends or people that aren't involved and they kind of get them involved. And so it's not as much me out recruiting more coaches. It's more of me taking care of my small group of coaches that I started with. And then it just kind of being a trickle down effect of, of word of mouth. Um, there's so many different things that we do as a coaching staff off the field that again, relates back to the league apps system that allows me to take my coaches to dinner and have people over at the house and do drafts for different fall events for some World Series and, and just take care of them and make them feel important and, and let them know that, that we would not be where we are today without them. And so, you know, to answer your question, it's just continuing to do things the right way, taking care of my coaching staff, and then ultimately my current coaches sharing the word with other people, and then they reach out to us. That's awesome to hear. Um, I think, you know, your background and, and the word of mouth is a credit to the, the culture and the, the mission that you guys have there at Easley Baseball Club. So it's great to hear that, um, you know, you're crediting a lot of the success you've had to that. Um, in terms of your use of league apps, and we've talked about it briefly, what are the most critical parts for you in your, for your club? And how do you guys leverage that, those parts of our system? So let me give you an example. I, uh, long weekend on the baseball field this weekend in Jackson, Mississippi, had 15 baseball teams down there uh, playing against another local you know, uh, uh, organization. Great weekend, a lot of fun, very tired. Woke up this morning on a Monday morning. You got to prepare for the next weekend. And so we're heading to Hoover, Alabama this Friday night with 15 more of my high school teams. So before I set my rosters, I've got to figure out, okay, who can come, who can't come, uh, who maybe can only come on Sunday and meet us. And so I, 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 I log on, um, use the messaging tool. I send out a mass email with, with one click of a button, and people are starting to email me throughout the day, letting me know that they cannot come. So it makes my life easier towards the end of the week because we already know who can come and who can't. Our rosters can be set accordingly and everything runs smooth throughout the weekend. Because if you just set rosters and you're not communicating with these people about who can be where and you show up and you're planning on 15 boys to be at the field and, and nine of them show up, it puts you in a bind. And so again, it helps everything run smooth. League apps has several things in place, but again, to your point, to your question, the messaging tool that we utilize um, the payment plan collection that we utilize is a huge difference maker. No, that's awesome to hear. Um, 
I know we've had a unique experience where you came on board with League Apps just as EBC was starting off. Um, and there's always some level of a learning curve of learning, of learning a new system of implementing technology. What has your experience been like learning League Apps, uh, working with our team directly and kind of setting up your administrative and, and coaches to kind of empower them for, for use of the system? Well, first of all, the, the quality, personable cust customer service that yourself and your team has, has offered and, and been available for. As you know, we spent a lot of, lot of time on the phone early uh, in, our, in our partnership. Uh, but again, it just takes time. It's just, uh, you know, heading into our fourth year, still don't have it all figured out, but, but, um, st but, but becoming more and more comfortable as time goes by, the more things you utilize, the more things you try, being able to log in and customize people's payment plans and, and communicate with specific teams or, or just an individual player. Um, the, the relationship with, with the, the league app staff, the easy access for, for shooting an email over to the support staff and getting, getting questions answered in a timely manner, um, you know, A plus service, and it's just made this transition very easy. Awesome to hear that. You know, um, we take a lot of pride in our customer service and view this as a partnership. Um, so great to hear that it's been an, an awesome experience. Um, overall, I mean, we've, we've been, it's been great working with your staff as well in terms of getting you guys on board. Um, it's a great organization to work with overall. Um, earlier we men mentioned COVID. Um, obviously that's something that's on everyone's mind still going into the fall season. Uh, it's been an incredibly difficult time for, for certain organizations in specific sports or specific re regions of the country. Um, how has easily uh, gotten by during this time and what are come, some, some of the lessons that you guys have learned? So we were put on hold early this spring, February, March, and April, when, when most of our younger teams were, were planning to start up. And so since that time, since mid-May, since late May, being able to start back up and play ball. You know, the main thing is just just being a little bit more, um, you know, aware, being, being having some precautions, doing the things that the CDC requires, and just taking the steps to, to follow the guidelines and to be able to play baseball. Um, there's, there's nothing really that's been canceled from May till now. It's more of just making sure my families are aware of what to expect when arriving at the ballpark. Are masks required? Are they not required? Are, are concessions going to be sold? Are they not going to be sold? So just little things like that, that um, the, the tournament directors are having to communicate to us. And then ultimately us getting in league apps and, and blasting out emails to keep people updated um, on what to expect. But, you know, again, baseball has, has continued um, other than the early early months this spring. Uh, we're just very hopeful that it can continue. The high school seasons can crank back up heading into the spring. And then we build off that again, heading into next summer. Congrats, I mean, that's awesome to hear. I think everything that you guys do from your brand, your communication, the environment that you've created for your athletes and coaches and families, um, is just a huge testament to your leadership. Um, but looking to the future, beyond the day-to-day -day operations of the orgs, what do you have planned for the future? What exciting things uh, are in the works for Easley Baseball Club and, and where can League Apps help or fit into that? Again, you know, dating back to our question earlier of what our goal is and what our, what our future plans are, uh, you know, potentially getting in a facility, having a home, having a place where, where the boys and girls can come hit and, and, and take ground balls and, and just feel like a home. You know, that's something that's continuing to, to be discussed. Is it, is, it, is it required? Do we have to have a facility to move forward? No, but it's just a piece of the puzzle we think that maybe could help um, move things forward. Um, you know, having a, a full-time assistant and, and Tammy Miller that has uh, allowed me to focus on on things on the field and off the field and preparing for what's next and in weeks to come um, she's been great you know so so having people like her that allows us to continue the track that we're on uh, we know that we're not always going to be 
perfect. We're not always going to make the right decisions with rosters and and which tournaments to go to. But as long as we are making ourselves aware of, of what we need to do to be better from year to year, then that's kind of our goal is to be better than we were the, the previous year and, and get each of our teams at each level more competitive each year. No, that's awesome. Um, and by all means, yeah, if we can help you out with the scalability stuff on the back end so you can focus on the, the important stuff that you just mentioned, um, now we can't wait to help you grow even more. Uh, me being a little bit of a baseball nerd and me being a baseball guy, uh, I'm just curious to see what you think about, about the changes that are happening to the sport when it comes to, to playing or technology. You've kind of seen it from all different sides, from recruiting to – know playing the big leagues to you know having a really long career and the new technology that's moving into the space um what are kind of your thoughts on on what's coming to the pipeline and, and technology and baseball in the future well social media is huge these days uh you know i'm getting off the field yesterday in jackson mississippi and you know get a few texts pop up from from some some college coaches mississippi state you know mom amata being one of them saying, hey, you know, this kid really looks good, huh? What you got on him? I'm like, of course you weren't there. But then I realized, you know, he had taken a screenshot of a Twitter post that I did, and he's able to follow it. And so there were some examples of that this summer that some, some players committed to some of these colleges without being seen by them, but they were able to – the colleges were able to see video – and then they were able to communicate with me and trust me about their skill set and their their projection. And so the the Division One dead period got pushed back to January 1 of 2021. So that that's going to – those types of things are going to continue throughout this fall and this winter. But um, it, it doesn't mean these kids aren't getting a fair opportunity or getting able to – being able to be evaluated. So what they need to understand, and we try to – make an understanding to them is, is can go out and play, go out and play, show us, show our coaching staff that, that what you can do because we're, we're working for you behind the scenes. And I think that's just more of what the summer ball programs have come to with the lack of the college coaches being able to be out and watching these guys um, is just the trust um, with our relationship and, and what we're able to tell them. That's awesome. Uh, well, Ed, I really appreciate the time today. It's always great to sit down with with you or Shaker or Tammy and, you know, any opportunity to learn more and about Easley Baseball Club and how we can help you guys out. Um, I'm always excited to do. Um, we're so lucky to have a partner with whose mission to, to bring quality baseball and softball experiences to, to so many different families. Um, we're just very fortunate to have partners like you. Uh, before we sign off, do you have any other parting words for you sports organizers, baseball listener, or baseball organizers, baseball leaders that are listening in on this? You know, I, I can honestly say that that you or anybody else didn't didn't tell me to say this, but just um, uh, highly recommend League Apps. The 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 partnership that they've given and joined with me has been been unbelievable. I couldn't imagine um, you know collecting payment or, or finding ways to communicate different ways to the 500 to 700 plus families that we have. It's, it's been great. And I really appreciate y'all. Awesome, Ed. Well, I really appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time to, to chat with us. I know you're a busy guy, so appreciate you fitness into your, your busy schedule. No problem, Paul. Thanks. Awesome, Ed. Have a good one. You too.